Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a bookcase that's also a secret door. To allow the cabinet to swing out, what you see from the outside has to be larger than what's on the inside. So I made a face frame out of one by pine. These pieces are a little bit thick for most built-in cabinets, but they actually match the thickness of some existing cabinets in the space. It worked out pretty well in that way. I used pocket holes to connect all these pieces. Pocket holes are great because they're hidden, and in this case it allows me to build the frame flat without having the structure of the cabinet behind it yet. I used a taller board on the bottom to match the base trim in the room. Then I cut some more pieces to use for the fronts of the shelves and attached them in the exact same way. Next it was time to build the actual structure of the cabinet that was going to go behind the frame. I made this all out of MDF. It's so easy to work with, it's really inexpensive, and it's going to be painted anyway. I used some glue and brad nails just to hold them in place and then came back, drilled holes with countersinks, and screwed them all together so they'd be nice and strong. Now the size of this box is the same size as the interior dimensions of the frame. I added pocket holes all the way around the box as a nice clean hidden way to attach the frame. I laid down a bead of glue and then put the frame in place. I lined up the corners and then used a brad nail to hold the frame down before I put the pocket screws in. You'll save yourself a lot of sanding if you get the pine and the MDF lined up before you connect them with pocket screws. The shelves were cut out of MDF as well, and I used a square to draw lines so that I could line the shelves up when I put them in place with the pocket hole screws. Again, take your time to get the MDF and the pine lined up before you screw it all together. For good measure, I just shot some brads down through the front faces of the shelves. Go back with wood filler and then sand it all. While I was working on this project, I was listening to The Martian by Andy Weir on Audible. It's a science fiction book, but it's a little more like fictional science. It's very scientific and very precise. If you're into that kind of thing, I would definitely check it out because I am enjoying it. But if you don't like that, there's 150,000 other titles on Audible that you can check out. Be sure to go to audible.com slash make stuff to get a free month of the service and a free book, whether you keep the service or not. And going there helps to support my videos. For the backs of the cabinets, I cut down pieces of 8 inch plywood and just really lightly brad nailed them on. I want them to be able to pop out really easily in case of an emergency. Before adding the hidden hinges, I wanted to reinforce the side of the frame. I cut another piece of one by and spread lots and lots of glue on it. Then I clamped it in place and let it dry overnight. For these particular hinges, you mark the center point and then you use a template and mark where the holes are going to be. These hidden hinges are really awesome. I'll have links to everything you need in the description. I marked off the necessary depth on the Forstner bit and then drilled the holes. You want to make sure you don't go too deep here because then the hinge would not sit flush with the face. Come back and clean up the hole with a knife and a chisel. Again, only make the holes as deep as the instructions tell you to. Put the hinge in place, pre-drill the holes, and then screw it in. Do the same for the other hinge. To account for some variation in the floor, I had to make some 8 inch plywood inserts to put underneath the wheels when I attached them to the bottom of the cabinet. You also notice that the wheel is at an angle on purpose. Then it was just priming and painting the cabinet. I found a really cool Jules Verne novel to use as the secret latch. I measured the width and the height, and then carefully cut out all the pages as one chunk. Hopefully I'll be able to reuse this book. Cut down some scrap pine that I had, and glued it all together to make up a fake interior to the book. Before the glue dried, I made sure to push the centerpiece out to force the spine into shape, so that the spine wouldn't be squishy when the book was on the shelf. Clamped it all together and let it dry. After it dried, I cut off the excess on the backside and then ran it over the joiner just to smooth out all the edges. Then I sprayed the top gold. 
to kind of look like the original pages. Put some glue on, put the cover on, and clamped it together to dry. Since I had thickened the wall where the hinges went, I had to cut out some of the original frame to make allowance for it. Multi-tools like this are really handy for notching out pieces. I set the bookcase in place and then marked where the center of the hinges fell against the wall. I used that line to place the template correctly on the door frame. Then I made holes for the hinges just like before. And finally it was time to mount the bookcase. This is really just a matter of getting the hinges lined up and getting them pushed in place and then adding screws. I will tell you this is much easier with someone helping you to hold the bookcase so that you can focus on getting the screws in straight. You don't want to take a chance of snapping one off. And it doesn't fit. Here's the problem. The diagonal measurement of the cabinet has to be smaller than the opening so that it can swing out. I had this figured out ahead of time when I was first doing the design, but late in the design process we decided to change the depth of the shelves. This threw the whole triangle off and I didn't make allowance for it. At this point the simplest thing to do without starting over was just to cut off the corner with a saw. My blade wasn't deep enough so I had to go back with a handsaw to chop off the excess. I knocked it out and then it worked just fine. I cut some extra pieces of plywood to fill in the gaps from the inside. Since they're painted white and there's going to be books in front of them, you ended up not seeing them anyway. I nailed them into the MDF and it was all good to go. Since the cabinet is so much deeper than the door frame that it's in, I had to build an offset to hold the latching mechanism. I used some 2x8 and some MDF to make a little shelf that I could screw in behind the door frame. I glued the pieces together and then countersunk some screws in from both sides. I added some pocket holes from the back side to make the joint even stronger to the door frame. Then I screwed it into the 2x4 frame around the opening. I used the drill bit from the pocket hole jig to notch out the door jam and then screwed it in. I added a self-adjusting gate latch, but it turned out that the movement was actually a bad thing. So I pulled it out, knocked out the pin, and then screwed it right into my bracket. It needed to be sturdy so that the door could catch on it every single time. I added a one by piece of pine to the cabinet so that I had something sturdy to attach the latch to. Pre-drilled some holes and then put the latch in place. I screwed in a simple handle into the back of the MDF shelf so you could close it from the inside. It works! I made a mark for the wire to pass through by moving the latch up and down. Had to take the latch off and then I drilled several holes and then cut it out with a knife. Unfortunately this caused some tear out on the inside of the shelf, but we came back later and painted it. I used some double sided tape and some felt to make sure that the book could move smoothly against the wall. I screwed in an eyelet to the back side of the book and then wrapped wire in through it. I started out with the picture frame wire and it turned out not to be rigid enough, so later on I swapped it out with the gate latch pull wire. I'll have the right item listed on the what you'll need section on my site for this project. I had to carve out a little bit of wood on the book to make sure that the hinge was flush. Push the hinge as far forward as you can and then screw it into the cabinet. Make sure that it moves smoothly and then feed the wire back through the hole. You'll have to play with the wire until you get the right tension because you want to make sure that the book can both pull and push the latch. And here it is, all finished. Now overall, I'm really excited about this. I mean, it works really well. It works better than I thought it would, and the friend that I made it for is really excited about it. If you are gonna make one of these, be prepared to do lots of shimming and sanding and trimming to make it fit, especially if you're putting it into old construction. The floor in this room is not level, so I had to adjust the wheels to match the floor, and this trim is not square, so I had to adjust for that. Just lots of little fixes to make it fit like I wanted it to fit. Now, even though the latch is connected to the book and there's a cable that you could grab and use by hand, in case that cable were to come loose or 
break. You can also push these panels out. They're just nailed in with a few brads, and so it would be really easy to get through there if you needed to in case of an emergency. And even though we're finished, I'm still gonna come back and work on it some more. We're gonna add a third hinge just to support the weight a little bit more, and it still needs quarter around along the bottom so that it matches up with the rest of the trim in the room. If you like this project or you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or at iliketomakestuff.com. I would love to know what you think. And if you've done anything like this, I would love to know how you did it differently. You can find me on all the social networks, whichever one you like the best. Just find me there and show me some stuff you're working on. I got more projects for you to check out, a podcast with Jimmy Duresta and David Picciuto called Making It, and a live Q&A show called Brain Pick. That's a chance for you to ask questions to your favorite makers and content creators on YouTube. If you want to help me do more of these videos and make them even better, there's a lot of ways you can support me right down here and I would really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe because I got a lot of exciting stuff coming. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Can't break it. Can't break it, GoPro. Oh, that was a good one. Thanks for making my dreams come true. Bye.